Hello and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are strolling. You have to start adding more words to that song. I know. That was a good intro. I like that you're like made the eye contact and I was like, this is my. Isn't your brother a musician? (laughs) Can he write us a song? I'm like, there's a jingle. He should write us a jingle, (laughs) do the music. I'll give him full props. (laughs) And he should do it before the last Front Porch Fridays, because isn't he yeah. doing one of those? He could announce it. Yeah, he's August 26th at our last, our finale for the Front Porch Fridays. He could do that. Announce the jingle. Okay, Alex. Intro. We're, we're calling you out here. We're calling you out. National recording artist and jingle maker. I, I am all in. Although then Ryan Jules could be really upset with me, because Ryan would want to do that for me, too. Maybe they, we can create a collab. We could do a collab. Actually, word on the street is there's secretly a collab between my brother, Ryan, and Logan from Low Water Bridge doing a front roll tune from the front roll boys. Look at you, you're a wealth of information even outside of Strasburg. <laughs> See, I can organize. I can't actually do any of the music making, so it's fine. We are sitting at Al Forno's Italian Cuisine. If you don't recognize that voice, you clearly have not heard of Strolling Strasburg before. <laughs> Olivia Hilton is here with me. She is Director of Strategic Initiatives. Still feels good to hear it. Right, it and really it does. still is difficult to say. It so is. it is still a struggle to say for the town of Strasburg. Brandon has welcomed us in to the restaurant. We're sitting in a corner table. We should have sat outside, but then there's a lot of street noise. True, yeah, because we're a bustling city. We are here in Strasburg, so it is a lot of traffic. City. <laughs> Brandon, thank you for thank having you us. Me. Tell me a little bit about Al Forno's. You're relatively new to ownership of this place. Yes, ma'am. Al Forno's has been around about two years, but we took over a new ownership, new management around March 1st, new recipes, all new ingredients. So it's been fairly good from the first month to the second month. We doubled sales, but we've been welcomed with open arms from the community. I would guess that the double in sales has something to do with the dough. You and I were having a a conversation before we started recording about the pride that you take in making this dough. Tell me about it. Well, it's six ingredients, everything you can name, and we actually age it similar to a fine wine or cheese, minimum of two to three days, so it gets proper fermentation, superior fruit to it. You said, I'm the pizza guy. You're the one that does this front lines, out the door. Seven days a week, open to close. It's not even just the crust. Walk me through a typical pizza because you're very proud of the fact that everything that goes out of here from a pizza perspective is very few ingredients, ingredients that you can actually pronounce, which is always nice. Tell me why that was your mindset when you came in and decided this was what you wanted to do for a business. I was in pizza for over 15 years, combined different things that I learned over the years and just tweaked it a little bit. I've seen different documentaries, videos, things that pretty much explain that details make the difference. So from the dough we make it, it takes about an hour to make, get it all balled up, but then we cool it for about an hour or two in the walk-in before stacking it up, and then we don't use it for, like I say, a minimum of 48 hours. I don't think any of us that call up or go online and order a pizza have any idea what should go into the process of making that pizza. We've all bought those Pillsbury pizza crust things at the grocery store that you pop open and you smoosh them out and you put them in the oven. This though, how you're doing it, makes such a better pizza. Yes, ma'am. To where I've been working with a restaurant consultant, he actually told me a story that he is working with two brothers from Italy. They started making some of their dough. The one brother's more of a kitchen person. And they got the dough all made. He said, okay, let's, let's make a pizza. The brother quickly stopped him and he said, no, we can't. We have to wait. He said, what do you mean? We have to wait at least two days. And the restaurant consultant laughed because I'd been working with him for a few months and he's like, that's, that's Brandon to a T. <laughs> Which, so those guys grew up in Italy learning how to make it from grandmother's stuff like that. Like I say, it takes time, but it makes a difference. I also love that you, you're like, everyone's rolled out the Pillsbury crust and all. I've put some bagel bites on a tray. That's about <laughs> as, as expertise as I bring to the conversation. And I've seen Brandon's pizzas. I've tasted them. So as a tasting expert, that's what I can, I can be that. What were you talking about before we started recording the double cheeseburger pizza? Oh, a bacon double cheeseburger? Um, yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, bacon double cheeseburger pizza. And they're so, they're personal sized pizzas and they're perfect. They're just a perfect size. So the, the ladies at the front desk at Town Hall, they're always, their lunch break. They're calling on their pizza orders and it spills up all of Town Hall. So it's mouthwatering and very difficult for anyone who's not trying to 
chow down on some pizza. And okay. pizza's not the only thing you do. I mean, you're, otherwise you'd be Al Forno's Pizza Shop. You're oh, yeah. Al Forno's <laughs> Italian cuisine. Tell me about some of the other things on the menu. Well, the town hall also gets some of our salads. We use romaine lettuce. Some places use iceberg, stuff like that. We try to use the freshest stuff we can. And if it's not fresh, we won't serve it. And we, we actually like when people tell us if something, if, if we miss the mark. That's why you really get better and yeah. We're here for the customers, for the people. We have pastas, our marinara, we usually simmer over an hour. It's about 10 ingredients, everything you can name. The fettuccine Alfredo, we actually make the sauce. No. -uh. From scratch. <laughs> I'm drooling all over the table now. Order. So if you ordered oh, it, you get a skillet, and you get the cream and the garlic and the parmesan. You can't see it, everyone, but Janet's mouth is open. I, because I, I am all about out. pasta, yeah, and I have tried to make Alfredo. You make it sound very, very. Oh, you just get out the skillet. It's like Olivia was laughing at me about pizza crust. Not as hard as you would think. I have never been able to do it, it to is taste. Hard for <laughs> So I am very excited to be trying some of this. Uh, the biggest thing, like I say, it's all about the time. Don't try to rush anything. Oh, see, that's the problem. I make it when I'm hungry, yeah. so I want to eat it like immediately, yeah. and that's just low temperature. Set it and forget it. That's what it is. It's the patience. Yeah, yeah. that's hard. So we'll rely on you. <laughs> right. To do it. Uh, <laughs> and you're open seven days a week. You deliver. Tell me where you deliver. We deliver to Strasburg, Middletown, Tom's Brook, seven days a week. Because as you said before, people do deserve to eat food every day. Yeah. So you really are happy to be <laughs> offering seven days a week since I know sometimes we go in into downtowns and Monday or Tuesday, you might not be able to find a lot of options. So I know that we value having you open and I know the front desk lady sure did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mentioned you've been in the pizza business for a while. Tell me how it is that you bought this business. Because when you told me initially, before we started recording, I was like, wait, what? Well, I only told you a little. I was selling firewood out of a dump trailer last winter with a buddy of mine that's a woodworker, just selling it on Craigslist. So I was regularly on Craigslist. I saw under the business section a pizzeria for sale. I hadn't been in pizza for about a year, but I had been in the pizza business for over 15 years prior. I told my wife, hey, that, that could be interesting. I'm like, look at the price. It was primarily buying the equipment and the name. We did have to put a lot of work in, but it feels good. Happier than I've been in years. I don't know a lot of people that have bought an entire business on Craigslist. It does sound sketchy when you say it like that. This worked out really well for you. Yes, ma'am. This is a Craigslist success story. Right. Like, I feel like it's not oh, like you yeah. had to meet somebody in the back of a parking lot. You should be the poster child now. Sadly, it is a small parking lot, but yeah, we met you. <laughs> but you have a couple of tables here. You have the shared patio next door so people can still come. It's really pretty out there and the traffic isn't on top of you. You can still sit outside and enjoy a nice lunch or a nice dinner and hang out for a little bit. I do like being able to see everyone going to and from home. For the first month or two, we, I guess you could say almost like raffle. I made a bunch of small cheese pizzas and every time the light would change, they would sit there for about three minutes and I would just hand out cheese no. pizzas. What? What? Telling people, hey, from Al Forno, new recipe, new, new dough, just give us a try. He's been uh, so generous. Yeah, I remember close to when you opened, he had given some pizzas to the PD and then at a different event, and I was like, we got some extra pizzas, like, let's just, let's try. So. That's really how you gotta get people to come in, they try it, and then they're sold. We offer a 10% discount for carryout for any town, county, and state government employees. Just I like to that. thank you for what they do, <laughs> keeping everything running. Rarely will you get me to do carry out when I know now that you'll bring it to my house. <laughs> and I can order online. So that was, those were the boxes that he was checking. If I don't really wanna have to call and talk to anybody, I would really rather just go online, type in what I want, put in any special notes, because trust me, there will be special notes. I'm the same way. I'm the I weird person that doesn't like anything the way that it's made. I gotta take something off or put something on. You're here seven days a week. Oh yeah. And then you have a driver. I have a driver, he's on call in the mornings, but he works four to close every day. His name is Mo. He's the heart and soul of the business. I'm the third owner, five years that he's worked at this location as a driver. One of our menu items is the Mo's Crispy Chicken Bacon Ranch sub. And that was something I was actually going to get rid of, but he talked me into keeping on there, so I named it after him. You weren't here yet when we were talking about the dessert pizzas. No, I There I are remember. dessert pizzas, <laughs> Olivia, and one of them was a suggestion from the guy next door that oh, owns yeah. the service center. Oh, yeah. We have an apple pie pizza. It is a pie filling that we make in-house, a Dutch crumble that we make in-house, and a cinnamon bun icing that we make in-house. 
it goes good with ice cream. Carol East, up next door that works at Gary's Strasburg Service Center, suggested possibly doing like a pineapple upside down version. So now we actually tried that and it's on the menu. It's, it's delicious, all thanks to Carol. And then you have subs, hot subs, cold hot subs. subs. Cold subs, sandwiches, salads, pastas, gyros, calzones, jumbo appetizers, wings, jumbo wings, pepperoni rolls, garlic knots, pretzel knots, cheese pretzel garlic breadsticks. Pretzel on pretzel Why are we here at 10 o'clock in the morning? He has not prepared a single thing. We, if we had come at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, we could have had a spread. We could have had a spread. In and front honestly, of us. We've been, well, right now, it's lunchtime as people are listening, right? <laughs> no, that's so true. they're probably like, gosh, I gotta like, now get I gotta somewhere. get. Yeah, so they so. can still call. So tell me again, what is your delivery radius? It's kind of by ear, but approximately 10 miles from our location will deliver. Sometimes we squeak some people in just because we know how it is, because some people don't get delivery where they're at. And Mo's like, oh, that's not that far. I'll go yeah, ahead and take especially it. Especially <laughs> at a slower time. We'll- We'll take care of people. And be nice to Mo. Give him an extra tip if he's coming a little bit further outside of the area to bring you something. Reward him in some way, shape, or form. And he's a great guy. We always get compliments about him. So how do people order? What is the best way to call, to go Uh, online? Give me all of the contact information. You can call at 540-465-5503 or go online at www.alcornoitalian.com. Do you have Facebook? Do you have social Uh, media? We also have Facebook. On our Facebook page, we do uh, Pizza of the Month situations. So, for example, this month's Pizza of the Month is a Thai chicken pizza. It's a mild spiced peanut sauce, mozzarella cheese, chicken marinated in the same sauce, onions, and then when it comes out of the oven, garnished with matchstick carrots and cilantro. Mm -hmm. See? So he's a good outside-the-box thinker. It's going to come in handy for you during grilled cheese and tomato Mm. soup festival season. There it is. Yeah, he was warned everybody about the possible peer pressuring to jump into grilled cheese and tomato soup. But if you are listening, as I'm sure you are, November 5th is our save the date for our sixth annual grilled cheese and tomato soup festival. Tickets go on sale October 1st. They will sell out in two weeks. Or less. Or less. So, yeah, I have, yep. Oh, oh, and it's ringing. It's happening. (laughs) The lunch orders are coming in. We're not even on the air yet. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. The are already calling. Lost Brandon. Look at that customer service. He ran for the phone. But yeah, no, I can't wait for grilled cheese. He's got to do it. I mean, it's... We've already talked about some of the things that he would do, so I think that'll be awesome. And we're going to, when he comes back, we're going to thank him, and then we're going to go to break. We're going to come back and talk about some other Stahlsbergy things, right? That sounds great. Okay. What's my favorite topic? They haven't even heard us yet, Brandon. They're already calling to order pizza. (laughs) But thank you for taking some time to chat with Olivia and I today. This has been fun. The husband thinks we're recording on Monday morning. He thinks we're having bologna sandwiches for dinner, which is what we're going to have for dinner on Monday. But on Friday... Is it fried bologna? He's... (laughs) Ew. <laughs> oh, no, or is it bologna and peanut butter sandwich? Oh, you're yeah. not invited to the grilled cheese festival. <laughs> <laughs> that was my dad's favorite. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Hello, I'm Mariah Garneau, and I am a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School. And we are partnering with a local environmental nonprofit, Sustainability Matters, to help yourself while helping the planet. Here is a helpful daily tip to promote sustainability in your life. The fast fashion we purchase from stores is mass-produced and often uses cheaper materials. As a result, they wear out and end up in landfills. Buying clothing that is eco-friendly, fair trade, or made from recycled materials is better for the environment. Buying secondhand makes one garment last longer, reduces the demand for mass production, and also saves you money. You can even donate or sell old clothing instead of throwing them away. Every small action we take towards saving the environment is another step closer to saving our planet. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We have strolled, literally strolled, (laughs) Olivia. This was like, what, a block and a half? We turned a corner, so it was like way far. It was really far. Actually, I'm going to rat you out because you were like, are we strolling or my car? Did I leave the car? And we actually strolled. But you have to stroll solo back to the cars and feel a little guilty about that. No, it's fine. It's it's, it's an easy walk. And I need to stop at the print shop, which I need to also ask you about getting them on a show because I have some printing needs that have to be met. And I noticed them when we were walking by. I'm like, oh, look, there's a print 
open door. I'm going to step right there on my way back through. That's perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at you, like, double strolling. So we are sitting now at Nancy's Coffee Bar. I want to talk about all of your stuff because as yeah. you were telling me and I'm writing them all down, I'm like, oh, and then there's this, and then there's this. Oh, but wait, and then there's this. So we touched briefly on grilled cheese and tomato soup festival. Tickets go on sale October 1st. The yes. event itself is on November 5th. You need vendors. You need people now to be thinking about being a participant in making grilled cheese and tomato soup. Absolutely. So I have started the joke that now about this is like the season of my peer pressure. So I start walking around all the restaurants downtown because honestly, well, of course, Strasburg businesses get first dibs at those spaces. So we have 10 locations for grilled cheese and tomato soup. And typically we have six or seven brick and mortar. And then we have three or four-ish that are the food truck pop-up type of type of vendor. So yeah, I don't have to beg people anymore. It's really nice. <laughs> I kind of give everyone a fill, like, okay, you're, you're up. Do you want to do it, yay or nay? And if they're nay or they don't, I'm like, okay, well, okay. we got a line of food You'll be back waiting. next year, trust me, when you see what you're missing out on. Exactly. <laughs> this event has spoiled me because it sells itself now. So we just, I promote, I ask everybody if they want to join in. And then all of the other retail businesses downtown will have face painting, balloons, tarot card reading, whatever kind of funky thing we want to do. And so that that easily builds itself. And funny enough, usually when tickets go on sale, the eateries have committed, but we don't even have all of our stops quite yet. Um, <laughs> and people don't care. They're still buying their tickets. They're still doing it. Like the cheese is there. So yeah, so I got to put my, my grilled cheese hat on soon, which I literally do have. It does not sure. surprise me in this slightest. And then my earrings today. So yes. I guess I showed them to you, but for, if you guys want to get a visual, one side is a Campbell's soup can and a little bowl, bowl of soup. soup. And the other side is a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> so thank you, small business owner who made these on Etsy. <laughs> So let's start with Front Porch Fridays because as people are listening on Friday afternoon, there is one tonight, but there's only a couple left. Yes. So we, of course, June, July, August offer Front Porch Friday, so it's 12 weeks. And yeah, wow, we are down to just three. So tonight right? is going to be Kids Edition. I love this one because we get a magician. This year we have somebody who is doing kids songs, like sing-along songs which I thought I could almost volunteer myself for, and I'm, I changed, I'm glad I was like, no, family people do that for a living, so that's great. We have a face painter, and really the highlight of the event is it, it's a children's market, so all the entre little entrepreneurs get in the booth and they sell their own no. items. Aww. Yeah, so it's really, it's really sweet. So they'll bake, they'll make jewelry, they'll paint. Okay, so I have to tell you, speaking of which, Ellie mm -hmm. has been coming to the Strasburg Farmer's Market. Her parents own a farm and they have been coming and they also do like this really cool camping scenario on the farm. It's like an Airbnb oh, camping thing. Yeah. But Ellie makes dog treats mm. and she makes peanut butter ones and banana ones. And I think there are some pumpkin ones and my dogs cannot get enough okay. of Ellie's dog treats. We need Ellie's dog treats. And she treats. is the cutest little thing you will ever find. She has got to be set up there. I, well, now this gives me a couple days. I can, I can right? find so, her See, this is, is the upside to recording in advance. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because <laughs> I think we have about 12 kids or 12 booths signed up. So, yeah, we usually have maybe 200, 300 people come through. But it's just a nice, it's 6 to 8 p.m. So it's a little earlier. Usually we're 7 to 9. But I guess kids go to bed. I don't know. So uh, we have them come out a little earlier. And I will say between 6 and 8, the later half. You want to shop early because when 7 o'clock hits and that magician starts, all the kids abandon ship. They leave their own booths. <laughs> they put their clothes signs yeah, out or going to lunch sign. Like they hire mom. She's got to watch the money now. And they go, yeah, listen to, to Tyler the magician. So who do you have for the last two weeks? So last two weeks is going to be the 19th is Sons of Liberty which is local to the Front Royal area. I love them. They are so funny. Like their emceeing is amazing. So they'll like call people out in the crowd and make jokes and they're like, they have really great chemistry. So I love Sons of Liberty. And then I'm again biased, but I'd say the finale is probably the one I'm most looking forward to is the Alex Hilton Band. So my brother is going to be playing the last Friday. I had got four years out of it before I booked him because I was trying to avoid the whole nepotism thing. But enough people had said, please, you gotta have your brother, you gotta have your brother. So he's moved home from Nashville and he will be there for seven to nine. It'll be his whole band. And they travel from like Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And one comes from Maryland. They're gonna be, yeah, the caboose. So that wraps up Front Porch Fridays. We have kids night tonight. And then the next few Fridays is a really solid band. Sons of Liberty is like a rock kind of vibe and my brother is like modern country. Some originals thrown in there. So yeah, that wraps up our season. Fabulous. Now tell me about scoops and hoops because I think Chief Sager mentioned this when he was on talking about National Night Out, but I can't remember. It's all blur. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> What month is it? So, he gave me swag and everything else went right out of my brain. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's tricky like that. August 20th, it's Scoops and Hoops from 1030 to 1230 at Strasburg Assembly of God. 
The PD goes out and they cook hot dogs and have snow cones, from JP snow cones, and then you just come out and play basketball. Oh. Um, so the church hosts it at their basketball court. I said this the first year and they've kept it on the flyer, which makes me happy, but you can come play a game of pig with the Strasburg PD. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna keep sneaking that on there, but it's really sweet. You just get free lunch. It's all about that community policing and coming back to just having positive relationships with our with our officers. And he talked a lot about that when we were talking about National Night Out. Most of our conversation was more about the community policing than it necessarily even was the event <laughs> yeah. that happened a few weeks ago. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so it's they continue to, to do those and they do their storytelling and coffee with the cop and all the kind of stuff just to try to have the, that community engagement that they're looking for. So you're coming back in early September, obviously, but before you do that, give me a couple of quick teasers for Harvest Festival on the 17th. 17th of September. Yes, so Harvest Festival, it's their fifth annual. I just feel, it feels so strange to say things are the fifth annual because that's when I know I started for years. <laughs> I'm like, oh it makes my it so easy, easy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So the fifth annual Harvest Festival started out as a community garden harvest celebration and now it shifted a little bit more into the fall harvest. But we do have it at the town park around the community garden. The farmer's market moves down there for the day. We have a kid zone. We do a cakewalk that's really popular. I love it. Especially with the chief. He's all in for those cakewalks. I love understand. the cakewalks. <laughs> yes. And we have Becky's buns on our side. So she <laughs> gives quite a few bun cakes to the cause. We do a fill the farm truck food drive all week leading up to the Harvest Festival. So it's just, if anyone knows, ever seen the show Parks and Rec, they have a Harvest Festival. And so it feels very fitting. One year we'll have a little Sebastian like donkey walking around, but <laughs> we don't have him yet. But that is the 17th of September from 10 to 2 in the town park. And so that's, yeah, a little fan favorite. It's just a quality, wholesome family event. And then on the 24th, you've got this, you and these alliterations, <laughs> you've got the Sip and Snack Mural Tour. Yes, this is coming back. We hosted this the first year I was here and we want to give it a go again. It's actually a ticketed event and ticket prices to be determined. But what will happen is you'll meet at a designated point downtown Everyone will put their t-shirts on. So it, it's kind of like a, every time I travel somewhere, I look for a food tour. So I look for a food tour, mm -hmm. it's wrapped up into architecture, whatever it might be. And so we started as kind of a tourism push of having people come and explore the downtown space quickly and accessibly and relatively affordable. So you'll get your t-shirt, you'll walk around, you get flights of beer, scoops of ice cream, and you'll have pretty much like five to seven treats or food bites of downtown while you're getting a mural tour. So probably will be me guiding the tour, but we also will recruit staff for Sat Arts who, who brought the murals, of course. And then we just talk about it, walk around, eat and sip and snack and wear a little t-shirt and just have a good time. And it's from two to five. So it's like the off hours of our restaurants. Mm -hmm. So the first year we did it, we had about 30 people do it. We broke it up into like 15 and 15 and walked around. So. Um, depending on how many tickets we sell. We'll I like it. I think it. it's great. It's going to give me some insight and background because we all drive through town mm -hmm. and see these murals and none of us probably for the most part know why is that one on that building and why is that what's yeah. on that building and what went into getting that up on that building. You're going to get answers to all yeah. of these questions. Absolutely. I, I love the concept and I think it's sweet and it's something locals can absolutely do. So I'm mentioning tourism, but if you love the murals and don't know what the heck they're about, cool, jump in. If you like food, get on in there like really whatever that's if you just want to come hang out with olivia and i <laughs> yeah, that's great you could do that too that should be our we'll have to up the ticket price so i'm glad you haven't set the ticket price yet because <laughs> if you need a personal appearance by me it's going to cost that's a little true. more that's the vip right there <laughs> So we got to wrap up, but I want to make sure people understand this weekend as they're listening is also the yard crawl. Yes. So be very careful while you're out and about anywhere on Route 11 because people are going to be scurrying all over the place. And you may be one of those people, so also pay attention to the cars. Mm -hmm. And Farmer's Market, Charlottesburg Farmer's Market, still happening still tomorrow. Happening. Yep. And oh, wow. Yeah, and actually the 20th, I should mention, after you go to Scoops and Hoops, they're having their first chicken and egg festival at the market. Festival might be a stretch but to be determined, but they're gonna be making live demonstrations of like deviled eggs and chicken salad no. sandwiches. Oh yeah, there's a chicken dance happening, live music. I am in. So yeah, I am all morning. in. Yes, and when you go to the Strasburg Farmer's Market tomorrow morning as you're listening, stop in at Nana's Blue Greenhouse. Tell them that you heard them on the radio a few weeks ago. If you didn't hear them, you can go to the valleytodaypodcast.com and listen to that show. Those ladies are fantastic. A nice, really nice addition to exactly. the Stralsburg Farmer's Market. I'm very happy that they're there every week. I love to hear it. 
thank you for meeting, strolling and meeting and then coughing and then complaining and gossiping and now recording. With I me love today. that. I love it all. <laughs> and thank you as always for ha- I I just really do so appreciate you letting Strasburg take up so much of your airtime cuz I'll take it. You it, give it to me, I'll take it. You just keep doing a good job and I'll let you keep doing it. <laughs> just Pressure's don't, on. don't mess it up. <laughs> I will be back on Monday. I will have a brand new episode of the Valley today ready to go for you a few minutes after noon. So meet me here then.